I'm John Sadler of Sadler Sports Insurance and wanted to talk to you today about what AYF and AYC organizations need to know for the 2023 season about insurance and risk management and everything I'm going to talk about today can be found on our website at sadlersports.com slash AYF. So let's get started by jumping into some new materials on risk management. Sudden cardiac arrest isn't new, but it hasn't received the attention that it's deserved in the past. It's a serious risk and the number one killer of student athletes while participating in sports. The DeMar Hamlin incident has recently resulted in a lot of increased awareness on this issue. Most states out there do require uh, SCA training um, for high school sports, but only several states have mandatory training for youth sports, including California and Ohio, but I expect to see that a n number of other states are going to uh, be passing mandatory training laws for youth sports. Uh, these laws require the administrator uh, and coach to be trained uh, in SCA. Uh, some states require specific videos to be viewed. They require fact sheet handouts for administrators, coaches, parents, and athletes and policies and procedures to help uh, to prevent and respond to an incident. Now we've developed a new SCA risk management program that we think will satisfy the various state law requirements. I wrote this program about a month ago and learned a lot from the research. For example, it's almost impossible to mess up while administering an AED. The device will only deliver a shock if it detects an abnormal heart rhythm. And also, it's embarrassing to admit, but uh, I really didn't understand the difference between a heart attack and sudden cardiac arrest. The main takeaway is that if a person suddenly collapses and is non-responsive or has convulsions, you should probably be thinking about SCA uh, as the culprit and you should be ready to take immediate action. So if you mess up while administering an ACPR, what, what happens? Could you be sued? And if you are sued, would you have general liability coverage? Well, you can be sued, but there are a number of Good Samaritan laws out there which provide immunity for volunteers while administering emergency first aid. On the issue of general liability coverage, the policy does have an exclusion uh, for bodily injury arising out of or failure to provide professional health care services. I spoke to a claims adjuster in the sports insurance niche and, and he, in his opinion, if a volunteer is providing or administering health care in an emergency situation, he wouldn't consider it to be a professional health care service, and as a result, you could expect to have coverage. When you think of a professional health care service, think of a licensed medical professional who is performing services for a fee, and volunteers generally don't fall under that category. Sports violence is nothing new. It's been around for decades, but it certainly seems to have gotten a lot worse recently. We're seeing all kinds of media accounts about a coach or an umpire beating up somebody. We, we see situations where the parent is the aggressor, the athlete is aggressor. We see a lot of spectator versus spectator violence and even some drive-by shootings. AYF leagues are having incidents and lawsuits. We recently received a claim for an organization in Florida that was sued for failure to come to the aid of a spectator who was beat up by another spectator. We recently conducted a survey of our AYF uh, leagues and we found that 18 percent have had an incident of violence and 26 percent consider sports violence to be a serious concern. What are the legal theories of recovery in sports violence lawsuits against sports organizations? The first would be negligent hiring, supervision, or retention of coaches and other staff members. Let's say, for example, that a coach gets into a fight and injures a parent, and there's a lawsuit. Under such a situation, it would be especially damaging to the sports organization if, if the coach uh, has a propensity for past violence. For example, if a criminal background check uh, would have revealed uh, a past conviction of something that would be a, a disqualification trigger under a criminal background check, that can be a problem. So when you run the criminal background checks, you're not just looking for sexual predators, you're, you're looking for uh, to disqualify others that have a propensity for violence. 
The next theory would be failure to protect participants and spectators if danger is reasonably foreseeable. Now this would be a past history or knowledge of violence. For example, there could be bad blood between teams where there have been incidents in the past, or it could be knowledge of potential violence. For example, threats on social media or rumor of violence prior to a competition. If any of these situations are present, you need to work closely with the facility manager, private security, and or law enforcement to prevent an incident. I recently published a new blog that explains how AYF organizations can address this problem. First, publish a zero tolerance policy for violence or actions that can lead to violence. And then the cornerstone of the program is to publish codes of conduct for coaches, players, and even parents. It's crucial that you get agreement to comply with these codes of conduct built into your registration process. This is important to be able to apply the sanctions legally. You're also going to want signage at the fields to reinforce the rules and sanctions. And our blog suggests uh, wording for this signage. And of course, this means you're going to have to have mobile signage to put at the entry points. You need to have serious sanctions for misconduct if you want the program to be effective. Of course, the individual violated to suspension or being banned from the program. However, an even better sanction is to sometimes punish someone who exerts some influence over the individual violator. For example, if a parent is a violator, you could also suspend their child for one to two weeks from both practice and games. Or, if a team in aggregate has three or more individual violations during a season, uh, you could say that all parents will not be allowed to watch from the sidelines or the bleachers and or that the team could be ineligible for the playoffs. We have a number of examples of sanctions in our blog that you could apply. We had an unfortunate incident in 2018 with one of our AYF organizations where they had uh, a heat stroke death which was absolutely tragic, uh, and it resulted in a, a million dollar plus settlement. According to the experts, heat stroke death is 100% preventable if you use immediate cold water immersion simultaneously with calling EMS. All administrators and staff should read our article on how to prevent heat stroke death and tackle football. Now, heat index is out as a standard of care, and wet bulb globe temperature is the new standard of care in lawsuits when it comes to decisions about uh, cancellation, um, postponement, rescheduling, or even practice modifications due to temperature. Now, a wet bulb globe temperature thermometer or meter costs $100 or more in most cases, but I found out that WeatherFX has an app for about 99 cents you can put on your smartphone that provides a mathematical approximation of wet bulb globe temperature. Also, in terms of a cold water immersion tub, you, you need to have it on hand, and you also need to have a water source and ice. Now, you do not have to have some expensive medical grade stainless steel tub. Instead, a Rubbermaid container or a kiddie pool will be fine. But the key is you must start cold water immersion prior to the arrival of EMS. In terms of group transportation, you do not want to use 15 passenger vans because of their high tip over propensity. And as a matter of fact, the insurance we provide for non-owned and hired auto liability excludes the use of 15 passenger vans to transport participants. A better and safer option would be a school bus, a charter bus, or a caravan of private passenger vehicles or minivans. Now, when it comes to hiring a charter bus, you're not automatically absolved from being sued just because you hire a charter. As a matter of fact, one of our AYF conference clients had a claim in 2018 that had uh, multiple deaths and other serious injuries. And so you're, you're still legally responsible to research the safety record of the charter bus company. You should collect certificates of insurance uh, on their behalf, and you should also make sure that the children wear safety belts if safety belts are present. And that was one of the uh, causes of action against uh, our AYF conference when they hired the charter bus. Thank goodness the charter bus had 
uh, high limits of insurance, but the organization was still sued because of lack of supervision in, in making sure that the children wore their safety belts. We have an excellent blog that uh, has links that will tell you everything you need to do when you hire a charter bus. Let's quickly review the most important risk management content. It's absolutely critical that the following written plans be adopted and implemented. First of all, you want to have a waiver and release agreement on file on behalf of all of your minors and your adult staff. We have an excellent article on our website that explains why waiver release agreements are worth the paper they're written on and we provide sample agreements that have been customized for both your, your minors and adults. And I can tell you that it's a precondition of general liability coverage that you have a system in place to collect these waiver release agreements. Second, you want to have a child abuse risk management plan in place. This is required by the new federal Safe Sport Act and also it's required by your insurance carrier so that you don't void your million dollar coverage for sex abuse and molestation. Third, you want to have a concussion awareness risk management plan and fourth, you want to have a sudden cardiac arrest risk management plan. Now we have all of these plans uh, combined in more in, a, in our sample AYF AYC risk management plan which I just updated about a week ago. This is a 25-page document that by the time you customize it, you're probably going to eliminate some sections. It's probably going to be about 15 pages, but it, it's extremely comprehensive and you're going to want to be able to uh, distribute this document to, to all of your, your staff members, your, your administrators, uh, and your coaches because it provides evidence that you've given educational awareness training and that you have written policies and procedures. I can't tell you how strongly I recommend that you do this and how important it is for your protection. In the event that you're sued, how are you going to prove or get into evidence that you have a sports risk management program and that you've delivered it to your staff, which serves as your educational awareness training and your written policies and procedures? Well, one of the best ways to do this is to have a, a registration online for your adult staff members where there's an electronic signature and as part of the electronic signature they agree that they've received your risk management plan or plans and that they've reviewed them and that they will comply with them. Another alternative would be to to have a DocuSign agreement of your entire risk management plan that's sent by email to each one of your staff members and, and they review it and sign off. There are other lower tech ways. If you're still doing paper registration, you can insert a paragraph uh, into your, your registration form for your staff and, and their agreement to comply. Or the, the old school way is to discuss the risk management plan uh, at one of your preseason meetings and to uh, pass around a piece of paper with a gang signature that everyone's received the training and that they agree to comply. Let's shift gears now from risk management and talk about the endorsed insurance program. The 2023 renewal rates are being negotiated and it's looking like we're going to have about a 5% blended rate reduction for any uh, new or renewal policies with an effective date of June 30 or after. And we're working right now on our online registration to get it updated. Now it's important for you to know that what we negotiate it is not based on how good of negotiators we are, but instead it's based on what our loss history is. And it's very important for all of our AYF, AYC members to implement our recommended risk management plans. Uh, and this, this is crucially important, especially that we prevent the catastrophic uh, losses such as the, the million dollar heat illness death claim. It's also very important for all uh, of our insured members to accurately report all of their teams and pay a premium for all teams when enrolling for coverage. The, the premium is an important part of the equation too because if we don't collect the proper premium it makes our loss ratios uh, higher than what they would be otherwise which can result in rate increases. We have a best in industry website that's capable of providing all insurance services without ever communicating with a staff member at Sadler. You visit our website at sadlersports.com slash AYF for all information and services. 
Now, if you're the person within your organization that's responsible for the insurance, we have a quick education section that will get you up to speed in the shortest amount of time. It will tell you why you need all five of our policies, why the policies have superior coverage to the competition, and we'll give you tips for how to apply. We list all coverages and rates, and you can uh, apply or renew online 24-7. Now this year, the renewals are going to include a pre-population of your prior year's information, which will reduce your number of keystrokes, and that's especially important if you're gonna have the same certificate holders. But what you have to understand is that uh, this is only true if the person applying for the insurance has the same email address that, we, that was used in the prior year. If you have a new insurance contact with a new insurance email address, you need to contact our office so, so that we can make the change in order for your renewal to pre-populate. We allow the self-issuance of new certificates of insurance uh, anytime, 24-7, and the website is just extremely convenient. Even though we have a best in industry website that can handle all of your service needs, at some point during the season, you may need to speak to our trained staff. You might have a question about coverage or risk management, or you may need a certificate of insurance with uh, special wording. You might have a question about how to add teams or, or file a claim. If so, I want you to know that we have a ticketing system and that all of the transactions performed by our service staff are professionally managed and, and tracked. And I'm very pleased to say that when the tickets are closed out and we ask for a grade of the performance that 97% uh, percent of the time our staff gets a smiley face, uh, which means that we're providing very good service that you can count on. Just to review, we have five insurance policies that we offer. We have a $100,000 excess accident policy, which pays medical bills on behalf of injured participants. The rates are going to vary uh, per team, per age group, per division. Uh, we have deductible options ranging anywhere from zero to $500. On the general liability policy, that pays for certain lawsuits alleging bodily injury and property damage. Uh, we have limits available of $1 million, $2 million, or $5 million. The uh, $5 million option is only available if it is a contractual requirement. We have a director's and officer's liability policy, which pays for certain lawsuits uh, alleging discrimination based on race, sex, age, or handicap wrongful suspension or termination of your personnel or players, or if you fail to follow your own rules or bylaws when you make an administrative decision, it's a flat charge per organization, a uh, million dollar limits 315, two million dollars is 473. We have a, a crime policy which will pay in the event of insider theft or embezzlement or unauthorized use to, of uh, personal um, charges on credit cards, and we have equipment coverage, which covers your sports equipment, field maintenance equipment, uh, and so forth uh, against fire theft uh, and vandalism, and the rate's $2 per $100 of coverage. It's not just sales talk, but we have the premier youth tackle football and flag football and cheer insurance program in the industry and you'll find the combination of our insurance and risk management uh, has no other equal. Uh, just to cover a few of the highlights, we're a single source for all your insurance needs. Uh, obviously, we have buying power of the group. We have high limits on the accident and general liability for your protection. And it's not just the high limits, it's what's inside the limits. We have a number of custom coverage enhancements uh, on the liability, such as sex abuse molestation, uh, non-owned and hired auto, and we eliminate a number of dangerous coverage loopholes that our competitors have, such as a participant versus participant exclusion. We have uh, the most convenient uh, enrollment in the industry, uh, instant online 24-7 quote pay print. We allow you to come and self-issue your certificates at any time for new uh, field owners. And of course, we've talked about our best in industry uh, risk management content. There are a number of other um, reasons to do business with us, which I'm not going to cover right now, but that are listed on this page.
Youth tackle football and cheer carries considerable risks, and the thought of being uninsured is just uh, unimaginable to me. Uh, we get a lot of uh, small and medium-sized claims every year that we pay. Um, the average accident claim is uh, $2,200, and the largest is over $75,000. Uh, as far as general liability claims go, the, the average claim amount is $71,000 and the largest claim is over a million dollars. But did you know that you can buy insurance but still be uninsured? Uh, if, if you fail to report all of your teams and pay a premium on behalf of all of your teams, you can still be uninsured and the claims department can deny your claim. That's why it is critical for you to give a, a, a fair and accurate uh, accounting and pay a premium on behalf of all teams. And uh, the, the largest claims we, we've had in history, once again, a heat stroke death claim uh, of a million dollars plus. Uh, we've had uh, crazy claims like falls off parade floats, $340,000. We've gotten a number of uh, claims filed this year. We, we had a, a slip and fall death at an indoor uh, cheer event where somebody bumped into somebody outside of a bathroom. We've had actually, uh, I don't know how this is possible, but uh, somebody was cooking uh, in the stands at a game and spilled cooking oil on somebody else. You, you just never know where it's coming from. Uh, and that's why you buy insurance, not just to protect against the expected claims, but you, you want it to protect against the unexpected claims as well. I can't stress this enough, but intentional underreporting of teams is insurance fraud and your claim may be denied. The number of teams you report uh, to AYF, AYC for membership must equal the number of teams you report to Sadler Insurance and vice versa. And I can tell you that while underwriting the insurance enrollment, we do review websites and social media to find out if the numbers match what was enrolled. And uh, I'll tell you the definition of a tackle team is uh, no more than 36 players. So if you have the Colts, for example, and you've, you've got a, a 15U team, a 12U team, and a 9U team, that's not one team. That's three teams. And you must report three different teams on your insur insurance enrollment. If you are a conference, I'm going to tell you the best way I think you should apply for your coverage. Uh, I think under a single insurance application, uh, you should apply for coverage under the name of your conference. You should also add the names of all of the associations under your conference as part of the named insured. And you should report and pay a premium for all teams uh, in all associations within your conference in a single application. The advantages of doing it this way, first of all, is less chance of an association not purchasing coverage or not purchasing correct coverage. The conference is provided with general liability to protect itself and its directors and officers for no additional charge. Uh, there's automatic coverage for the conference for hosting a, a regional championship or conference all-star teams. And uh, conferences that allow their associations to separately purchase their own insurance will incur additional cost to purchase their own separate conference policy. In terms of your coverage for sex abuse molestation, our general liability policy provides a $1 million limit, but you need to know that you, your coverage will be voided unless three things happen. Number one, you must have a system in place to perform and run background checks on all paid staff and volunteers. Number two, you must have written procedures that include sex abuse and molestation prevention and number three, you must have written procedures which include a response plan uh, for allegations that require that law enforcement be notified. And we cover all of this in the Child Abuse Risk Management Plan, which we offer to our AYF and AYC clients. Thanks for your time today. Remember that the practice of risk management is essential for your operations. If you have any questions, we would be glad to help. Just get in touch. We very much appreciate the relationship we have with our AYF and AYC family, and we wish you the best for the 2023 season.